we have an excel sheet with the source data a few cells in the excel sheet are merged cells and we need to compare the actual values against the budget as well as the last year values we would like to see a report in power bi wherein there should be a slicer for a group of items and the ledger name should appear beneath customer name and a comparison of year over year growth current year versus last year as well as the actual versus budget value should be shown like this let us quickly see how we can create one such report in power bi i am ready to load the data from this excel sheet i am going to hit transform data power query editor has its own way to deal with merged cells and you can just make a note of how it has managed to pull data from a merged cell in excel the step i am going to perform is to reach applied steps then i am going to cancel the last two operations that were automatically performed in power query editor the second step that i am going to perform is to select the first column and second column and then from the transform tab i am going to use an option called merge columns in which i am going to use a separator called a semicolon and i am going to leave the name of the new column as a merged column the moment i hit okay button you will be able to see that these two columns are merged together and then the text from these two columns will be separated by a semicolon click okay and it is done in the third step i am simply going to transpose the table i could see an option called the transpose here i just click on transpose the table and in the fourth step i would like to ensure that i bring the first row items as my column headers i hit my home tab and then i can use an option here called use first row as header in the fifth step i am going to rename the first two columns and the second column i would like to rename as a type and in this step i am going to click on the customer column and then would like to make use of an option called fill down so that i could see the values of customer 1 is repeated in rest of the rows the sixth step i am going to select the first two columns and then click on unpivot columns but to choose unpivot all other columns in the seventh step i move to the result of the unpivot activity in which i could see the attribute column wherein we have used the semicolon in the second step probably you can remember that i am going to use an option called split column by delimiter and semicolon is my delimiter each occurrence of the delimiter it should happen click okay and this has now been split into two different columns so the attribute one column should be renamed as group and then the attribute two column let me have a quick check it's called a ledger name i call it as a ledger name and i am ready to now load the data into the front end i click on home tab click on close and apply the data is now loaded before trying to create a report as per the user's requirement let us now spice this shaped data with some dax when i look at the table the column called type holds three different parameters actual values for current year budget values for current year as well as last year values so i may be required to add the numbers in the value column for current year last year budget values so that i can use them in my reports for that purpose i would like to create a dax measures and to keep my dax measures away from the fact table i prefer to create a new table and i prefer to give a name like this so i just created a table over there in which i am going to create my measures so that i can keep my measures away from my table of data and the very first measure i am going to create is called my actual values for which i am going to use the almighty the powerful calculate function which should do what should go to my data table open the value column and add all those numbers into this column however i want to filter the data table before the summation is going to happen on the data type column equals act or actuals 
So I'm just giving an instruction to Power BI that it should filter the type column to AZT and then sum the values from the value column. Hit enter. I don't find any indication of any error happening over there. Probably my formula may be working correct. Assuming that it is going to be working correct, I'm going to just copy this formula and then I'm going to click on new measure, paste it here. We'd like to get the budget values wherein the type is called BUD and we'd like to create one more new measure. So I'm simply making small changes in the formula so i get the last year value three different measures have been created by me and i could see that this is in a parking table wherein i have a dummy column that i can hide now let me create two more simple measures the one will be on a, what is the difference between last year and this year which we can simply call as year over year and i want to show the value in terms of percentages and i need to confirm that this is going to be a percentage value so I need to enter the option here to display the values in this column in percentages. And finally, I would like to create one more mesh. Hit enter in your keyboard after typing the formula. Ensure that you are going to convert this also into a percentage value. So we have created five measures. So my data is sitting somewhere. My measures are available in a parking table called all measures. And as for the requirement of the user, I'm going to create a slicer and then call for the values from the groups. And I would like to change the settings as a tile. And I'm going to click on a matrix. I would like to call the customer name and would like to pull my ledger names below that. So I'll be able to see the values for every ledger item in case I want to see that. Then I'm going to pull my measures that I have created. So I want to see what? I want to see the last year value. I want to see the actual value. I want to see the budget for current year. And then I want to see the year over year growth. I want to see the actual versus budget. So I'm just going to click on this plus button over there. Then I'll be able to see the values in terms of individual ledger items. So this is what is expected to be created as a report. And we have now the next requirement. The requirement is what will happen if I'm going to add more data. So let me temporarily get rid of this picture. Probably I can just move it downwards. And to quickly create a demo, I'm going to copy the data for customer 2 and customer 3 into my source data here. I'm just going to paste it here. So you can now see that I need to save the file. Currently, it contains the data for only one customer. And then I'm going to hit refresh. Now you'll be able to see the data for customer 2 is available over there. Customer 3 is available over there. I can expand whatever is required. I can just check what is the uh, traveling and conveyance expenses. OK, so now you can see customer 2, customer 3. There is no budget value. So we have the error indication mechanism here says uh, check your data. So let us quickly check whether we have the data for budgets for all of them. Yes, we do have budgets. The problem is the column header is uh, slightly different. Okay, so there is an error in the column header over there. So what is going to happen now? So this is called BUD by mistake. It was typed here as BGT. If I'm going to replace that here, say control yes, go there and then try to refresh and I am good to go now. You will be able to see the error indication text has gone out and we have the real values uh, popping up. Traveling and conveyance, oh my god. This is really good because uh, all this magic is happening with the help of uh, Power Query Editor. So I can simply call this as uh, Power Query Magic. Thank you very much for watching this demo. This source file used by me can be downloaded from the link mentioned in the description. I tried something and produced a result which looks to be acceptable. However, there could be a better way around to create a report from this data set which should be easier and faster than my solution. For example, you can say, Hi Raja, instead of the seven steps you used in shaping the data, I have another method which just needs two or three steps or three or four steps. Similarly, you may have a better way of writing measures than what I have demonstrated. Why don't you share your knowledge by posting your comments or some suggestions. Thank you for your time. See you in our next video.